Greetings and welcome back to Drew's office. Today is part two as we continue to learn about tables in Microsoft Excel. And what we did in part one, we converted our data range to a table. And then we looked at the table design tab and we renamed our table over here. So today we're gonna write some formulas that will extract information from within our food table. If we want to know how many rows we have, we can use the rows function and simply type the name of our table. And if we want to know how many columns we have, we can use the columns function. In this cell here, after we type our table name, we can use open square brackets. And this will allow us to build a structured reference to a specific element within the table. And then close our square brackets and close the round brackets for the rows function. We have seven rows of data, plus the header row, plus the total row. We should get an answer of nine. In Microsoft Excel, when we talk about our data, what we really mean is the number of records in our table. For the hash data portion of the table, we should get the answer of seven. The hash all element includes the header row, all of the data rows, and also the total row. And if we switch off or on these portions of the table, we see that the formula updates. Hash headers refers to the entire header row in our table. Suppose we wanna look up a single item in the header row. We want to know the name of our first column. We're gonna type equals, the name of our table, open square bracket. And because we want to look at the header row and a specific column, we need another pair of square brackets. Go down to hash headers, press tab on our keyboard to select it, close the square bracket. Then we need a comma, open square bracket, and we want the ID column. Close the square bracket, and then another square bracket to close off the entire formula. Let's change the name of our first column and see if our formula updates. If we wanna get the total for the beverages column, let's build our formula. In our beverages column, suppose we just wanna know how many countries drink tea. Let's change it to a count if. Our range is the beverage column. In the criteria, we can use a wildcard asterisk. In other words, we don't care what letters come before it, as long as the name has the word T in it. And the answer is three. And if we change the total in the table back to a standard count, our formula over here updates accordingly. Let's build a VLOOKUP using our table name as the reference. First, we want to look up the country for each of these IDs. We can build a formula for the first row and autofill down.
Let's build our formulas for the fruit and beverage columns. And if you're new to Excel, this is why it's so fantastic over here. We can highlight both cells and autofill them both at the same time. And not only that, we don't even need to drag our mouse folks. We can get our autofill cursor and double click. Boom. And in our next video, we'll be using the XLOOKUP function to find out how we deal with absolute cell referencing when it comes to tables. And we'll also be using our table reference inside a drop-down list. Until then, this is the end.